Gentlemen, there's an added intimacy to this great arena today. We're down to one table, which means the crowd are closer and the pressure is growing. Seven men are still in the hunt to be crowned Johnson's Paint Players Champion, including the two waiting backstage. And what a quarterfinal. They've won four big titles between them already this season. It's time for the best of the best to deliver again in Telford. <laughs> Please welcome a man in the form of his life. He successfully defended his Scottish Open title in December and stormed to the Welsh Open crown five days ago in Clandudno, bidding for his first appearance in a Players' Champ semi-final, the Tyneside Terror, Gary Wilson. <laughs> And his opponent, he won his second Champ of Champs in November, the shootout in December. He's on 10 ranking titles so far, the pride of Northern Ireland. And today, ladies and gentlemen, he's the birthday boy, Mark the Pistol, Alan. <laughs> Yes, two of the form players of the season. They're both enjoying their highest ever ranking. Mark Allen at three, Gary Wilson at 12. They've each won two trophies already. Big match to advance to the semi-finals of this players' ready, championship. Gary? Gary Wilson's won his last eight matches on tour seven, of course, at the Welsh Open. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame. Gary there's Wilson's been some heavy scoring between the two of them. Wilson made a maximum last weekend in the semis in Clandidno. And, of course, Mark Allen made three centuries in a row, including a 1-4-6. Um, not sure. I'm not sure. Well, I think they're talking about the lighting. Yeah. So, the match isn't quite going to start yet, it would seem. Talking about a shadow or something on the table. Just while we uh, wait Laughing. for this, Stephen, how do you see this one? Yeah, I mean, I, I, thinking about Gary Wilson, he's obviously won three ranking events, whereas one to eight players enter them. I suppose the next step for him is to win one of these tournaments where it's, it's the elite playing at a, a you know 16-player event when it's all the sort of Best yeah, players. No, I, know. I can um, see I suppose it. Yeah. That's the next level, and uh, chance to do that in this it's event. A big shadow here, Martin. Well, there's a lot of people pointing up at the <laughs> the lighting rig here, so hopefully someone will be able to sort out. There's a big shadow they're saying on the table, which Gary Wilson noticed as he was about to break off. Jan <laughs> Bahasi. He doesn't referee that much these days. He's an absolute legend, <clears> but he's been plunged right into something here, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting to see how Mark Allen plays today. Obviously, he was very, very impressive against Mark Williams. Started off three centuries in the first three frames. I think we're all ready to go now. The offending yeah. light is off. They're very precious, these top players, aren't they? I mean, I'm sure when they play in their snooker club, there's all sorts of shadows and lights going on. True, but there is 125,000 to the winner this week. Anyway, we're underway, and, uh, yeah, this should be a really good game, I think. Mark Allen was very happy, wasn't he, with the way he played against Mark Williams. Some of the sort of matches he's won this season, he's been toughing through, but that was heavy scoring. And I'm sure he knows he'll have to play well against someone who's feeling the best they've ever felt as a snooker player in Gary Wilson. In any sport, there's no... There's nothing quite like having supreme confidence in yourself and in your game. And that's exactly how Gary Wilson will be feeling at the moment and with his form. Quite a bold shot by Mark Allen. 
has left this red to right corner. That's quite an attacking shot. Has he left this red? Yep. One. So, quite a, probably for Guy Wilson, an unexpected early chance. Gary Wilson, one. That was a little nervy one, a little bit of a decel. And when you do decelerate through the ball, that's what happens, you overcut. You miss the pot thin. Gary Wilson's chance was unexpected. This one is even more so for Mark Allen. One. Tempted to go into the bunch from this black. There is open reds. Yep, straight into the reds. Aggressive shot choice. It was the right shot. He's got a choice of two. Eight. Middle pocket or corner pocket. Nine. Just on the uh, the race to the Tour Championship, because that's top 12 after the World Open, which is a big event coming up in China. Mark Allen currently provisionally 12th, but if he won this match, he'd go up to 10, so he would, wouldn't be guaranteed to be in it, but certainly take a big step towards that huge event in Manchester in early April. Sixteen. Yeah, going back to that open and red that Mark Allen went for that let Gary in. It was a time last season when he's winning Nineteen. those three tournaments where he played a very measured game. He wouldn't be playing. He wouldn't have been playing aggressive shots like that, knowing that he was leaving balls on, should he miss. So, as I say, that shows a sign of his confidence in the way he's playing. Twenty-five. Just got to judge the cannon here off the reds. Just got into the cue ball, but too much off the blue. Why they just decide to just brush the cue ball off the pack? Get position on the black or play it more aggressively with a stun. And you played the. The first shot. And so judging that little cannon was never going to be straightforward. And this is a thin one on the black. Cue ball going into the reds. Very easy to take your eye off the pot here and watch the cue ball. It's hot, but it hasn't finished great at all. Of course, it, it feels very different today. We are really down to one table now. The other one's been taken out. The audience around three sides of this arena. Just a reminder, it's getting more serious, this event.
30 oh, foot recovery. Yeah, good signs early on already for Alan. Forty-one. May have to flick a little bit of right hand side on to get to the potting point of this red. Now I could get through 42. to it. That was a nice gap to find. OK, when you go into the pack, you expect to have some sort of pot on, so it'd have been unlucky if you didn't have anything. But you would have been delighted to have seen that gap. Forty nine. This is another excellent start. 56. A match from Mark Allen. Savage scoring in his first round against Williams. Three centuries in the first three frames. And there's just no better feeling for a snooker player when you just feel like every time you get to the table, 57. you're going to win the frame in one visit. And nothing puts pressure on your opponent more than doing that. I would say missing blacks off a spot at this level is unforgivable. And that's what Gary Wilson did, and it's cost him the first frame. 64. Yeah, he's been thoroughly punished, hasn't he, for that one mistake. Oh, 65. Looking as comfortable at the start of this match as he did in the first round against Mark Williams. Seventy three. Seventy eight. At this stage of a, a tournament of this size, you know you've got to play well. Simple as that. Well, Callan certainly started in that vein. Yeah, well, sometimes you get, you know, you get a couple of shots to get relaxing into a match when it's at this level. You, you've got to be on it straight away. And Wilson wasn't missing that black off a spot. Mark Allen, bang on it. Well, he got the red out. It's not in, but a 594. Fairly punishing. Gary Wilson's missed black. So already a lively start for the Antrim man. The birthday boy, Mark Allen, 38 today, and leading Gary Wilson 1-0. Second quarter final here at the Players' Thank Championship underway. Mark frame. Allen looking sharp, 84. The break in the opening frame. Best of 11, of course. In terms of their previous meetings, they played five times before, all best of sevens. 
He's 4-1 to Mark Allen. Most recent was at the British Open last season. But, of course, uh, since then, Gary Wilson has pressed on and he's won three ranking titles, so he's a different player now. If you ever want to find Gary at the tournament, just go to the practice room, because <laughs> he always seems to be in there. He certainly puts the work in, but that Miss Black in frame one was an early sort of dent to his confidence. Pretty aggressive shot choice. It's not left anything this time. It could quite easily have left the red that's beside the black. Unless that doesn't go, of course. Mark Allen leading the applause there. Dangerous with all the reds having sort of started to spread. They want the cue ball on the green side of the bulk area to obviously stop his opponent and the cue ball back to bulk. Yeah, that's pretty good. sure if Gary can just get to an edge of one of those reds farthest to the left of the table. If not, it looks like it'll probably be another containing safety shot. Just looking at a point on this black cushion. They can leave the cue ball. Or he won't leave a pot on.
He can get to red to take the cue ball back up to bulk down the left side of the table. He's just got to be careful he doesn't push a red over the right corner pocket. A long way off on that long pot of tent. This red that's closest to the cue ball, place to the left middle, the cue ball's going to be going possibly somewhere near the black. You wouldn't be guaranteed to be have a pot in the black. In fact, playing it to the corner. One. Right in the middle. Gary Wilson, first term pro in 2004. He dropped off in six. 2006, spent seven years off tour. But it wasn't until 2013 he got back on. This is his 17th quarter final in a ranking event. He's fourth this season, so it just shows you that of late he's found some consistency. Seven. If he wins the match, he'll go up to provisionally 11 in the world. And, of course, if he's still in the tournament, he gets a chance to get in the big event in Riyadh, the new tournament invitation event, where the first prize is a quarter of a million pounds. So I'm sure that's in the back of his mind as well. It's, it's in the back of his mind to possibly try and cannon the black out here of this blue. In fact, he's taking the pink. He had a look at the path that the cue ball would have to take. And getting the pink back on its spot certainly helps. 13. Has to cue this nicely you know, to avoid contacting other reds. Get the cue ball back up the table. Yep, well played. Very good. Forty. Clearly, and it speaks for itself, really, that the fact he's won these tournaments shows he's more 19. comfortable now in this sort of environment. It's one table set up. He played brilliantly in that semi final at the weekend against the great John Higgins. I think Mark Allen was right where he 20. said actually about Gary Wilson. He said, that, you know, his temperament at times had let him down, and Gary will, will tell you that himself. But now he's find, found the winning formula, it makes him more dangerous than ever. Twenty six. Twenty 
27. Again, might be tempted to play a cannon in the red and black here. The only thing that would stop him doing it is you, you, perhaps you're not guaranteed being a pot in a red. He wants to win this second frame at this visit. Doesn't want to take any undue risks. So this is a decent shot choice. He was guaranteed being on a red. 32. Thirty-three. If he'd put the red in the middle, he wouldn't have cannoned the red beside the side cushion. Thirty-eight. Yeah, he just sort of gradually lost his way here. So it feels Harry like Wilson. the break's come to a bit of a premature end there. It was a promising position he was in. But just 38. Yeah, it's a it's different players go about break build in different ways. If perhaps they'd taken a little bit of a risk to bring the black into play, that break might have been easier. When you're sort of picking off reds one by one. You need to rely on cue ball control, and he just didn't have it in the end. He could be in trouble here, Mark. Gary Wilson should see if Mark gets his shot right. He didn't. Well, that'll do, though. Come on. <laughs> Gary was out of his seat there, <laughs> but then he was back in his seat when the red went in. Extraordinary, really, at that angle. And indeed, that pace. Mark Allen. Mark. No problem hitting a red. But can you hit a red and keep it safe? And say the two reds on the right cushion. If you land dead weight on those, that looks to be quite a safe area, safe-ish. But it's going to be very difficult not to leave a pot on here. Mark Allen four. Oh dear. So Mark Allen thirty three behind. Not straightforward this, but he has some sort of chance to get back into the frame. Uh, 
I might be tempted. Green to right middle. Come off the cushion cannon into those two reds on the right cushion. It doesn't look far off a natural angle. Okay, again, it's a risk. Why is he playing in cannon into the red and black? Nicely struck. Four. But it's not anything easy. Five. He's got a great temperament, Alan. He's got a great bottle and these sort of non-regulation pots, he seems to knock a lot of them in. Twenty. leave himself just a little bit higher on the pink here. That'll allow him just to stun the cue ball 21. across the face of these two reds to the left of the table. Land on one of them to the right middle. Just got to be careful you don't make contact with the red on the way through. Yep, beautifully played. He's got a fabulous touch. He really does. of the eyebrows after he hit that cue ball travel just a couple of inches further than he wanted. But again, that's just gorgeous touch. Thirty-four. The big shot in this frame, if Mark Allen's going to win it at this visit. Chance to bring both reds off with his one shot here. Didn't he play it well? So now... He's in his hands to really take advantage. Of course, Gary Wilson was in, he lost position. Alan fluked that red, laid the snooker. He's got the safe reds in play. Yeah, in fact, the red before to get the absolute optimum angle on the pink was very good. Because he had to put that red into the left side of the pocket. 41. That lost the cue ball there. Can play this a couple of ways. Can play with left hand side of two cushions. 
just a touch of right-hand side check of one cushion for the red to right corner. It's played the latter. He had a bit of luck, he fluked a red 46. at the start of this break to lay the snooker on his opponent, but this has been a fabulous visit to the table. By and large, the cue ball has been immaculate. And as soon as I say that, he loses it a little bit. Did play for the brown. Yellow's not a problem. Well, he did say he made a slight change, didn't he? He wouldn't elaborate on what it was, but I know he was very disappointed with how he played 49. in Clan Didno when he lost to John Higgins there last week in the quarters. Whatever he's done, it's working. 51. He's looking in great touch. So Harry Wilson was in first in the opener, missed that black. He was in in this frame, he lost his way. Positionally, missed a, a difficult red, found himself snookered. Oh, Callan's made a great break here. He's looking uh, seriously good, Nick. Thank you. 63 in the frame. So Mark Allen. Mark Allen. A very impressive start today. The world number three takes early control of this quarter final. He leads Gary Wilson 2 0. So 2 0 to Mark Allen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For that lead so far, Gary Wilson third frame. knows he's got to just tighten up Gary in a couple Wilson of areas. Early days yet, but Alan, he's looking very confident. Same shot he played in the, the opening frame. If he pots this red, he goes very close to Cannon in the red that's to the left of the black, which I'm sure is what was in his mind. But playing at that pace and getting that close, you're always going to leave it. A very confident shot to take on. One. Six.
worked out very nicely that didn't it freed the black and the fact is we know he's feeling good in general he's just won a tournament so he's not coming here you know worrying about his game he's on an all-time high 14. actually so even though he's lost the first two frames it's not necessarily uh, a serious issue Mark Allen's playing well but maybe this is now his turn After he won the Scottish Open the first time, he did, his form did sort of go off the boil and he did struggle. He dropped out the top 16. But then retaining it, which was a little out of the blue just before Christmas, seems to have made something click. And very quickly after that, he won the Welsh. It's true, though, these players' series events are different to those 1 to 8 events. They're very tough to win the full field. Here, you know, in every round, you're going to be playing a top player. And invariably, it's one all the attention's on you. So it feels like a bit of a step up if he could land one of these trophies. 23. Oh. Gary Wilson, 23. Mark nice Allen's set. Some amusement there, the black's flown off the table. Yeah, it's very unusual. Obviously, the black, it didn't go in the middle of the pocket because then it wouldn't have come off the table. But for it to, to leave the table was very unusual. Happened to Matt Selt, didn't it? Earlier on, cost him a match. <laughs> well, it sort of seemed to come back out the pocket for him, didn't it? Eight. Yeah, Gary Wilson will be sat in his chair at the moment thinking, you know, this is... Everything's against me at the moment. Obviously, the previous frame, Mark Allen fluked to red in the middle, and laid a snooker, and that time, nice. that came off the table. We've seen the match last night. Ali Carter had a poor run of the ball in the first session, but then got it in the second session. So he's got to stay in the match, and it can even itself out, the run of the ball. But Mark Allen will be thinking, if I can make the most of this chance, I'm really going to, you know, pile 16. on the misery for my opponent. Seventeen. Man, the angle has got in the blue. No choice, really, I think. But to go into the, the bunch, he's shaking his head. I don't think he... He's not a player that likes to go into the pack when he's not certain of the outcome, or as certain as you can be. He doesn't like to trust to luck, Mark Allen, when he's in the balls. Very precise player. I think it's definitely worth going into the, the bunch here. Didn't play with a lot of pace. Didn't commit at all, and... I'm afraid that's a very poor shot. I think you had to commit 22. there. As I say, he plays a very, plays a very precise way. Gary Wilson will be very relieved. I'm sure he feared the worst. And Mark Allen put the first red and got in.
Mark Allen, 22. This is why you've got to try, and it's not always easy, but you've got to try and stay calm in that chair and not sort of look stew on things because he's maybe back to the table quicker than he thought he would be. Trying to get the cue ball. I was going to say back, and the ball came around the yellow, but this red goes. So, not the best shot from Gary Wilson. Yes. Yes. Oh, in this mood, you can't afford to leave Alan anything. He's proven that already in the first two frames. Definitely think he's going Six. to be a threat at the Crucible this year. It's coming round, isn't it, in a couple of months, the World Championship. Got to the semis there last year, only the second time he got that far. He'd had struggled over the years, but the new mix he's found in his game will suit him over the long sessions there. Seven. Thirteen. You can see there, Mark Allen, left-hander, but it's amazing the amount of left-handed players that use the rest right-handed. It's quite a common thing. Tried to force the angle, though, with that black. Mark Allen, Didn't have 13. a natural angle, tried to force it, tried to put the black in just the, the left-hand side of the pocket as he was looking at it. The end didn't cue it well enough. Yeah. Mm, that's not a good shot. And Gary Wilson, as you can see, not the right side of the blue. Yeah, the first shot was a poor one because the plant was unmissable. Six. So no real excuse for not getting nicely on the colour. Maybe it's just his composure is just not what it should be at the moment. Gary Wilson, six. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously subjective in a way of positional success, but you can see Wilson quite low there in the 70s, Allen 95%. That's been an issue for Gary Wilson. It was in the last frame. Just lost position, or ideal position anyway. Oh, maybe another chance here.
beautiful. Thank you. Six. Thirteen. <clears throat> Nineteen. Blue puts him 12 in front, so he would need yellow, green and brown as well. He cued that well. All was awkward. I think he was in the jaws of the pocket there. 25. And that was very confidently played. So various things were going wrong for Gary Wilson, but he didn't get on his own case. The chance came. Mark Allen left that red from distance. He knocked it in. Two more pots. One. Thirty. Is what I was saying earlier. You know, in general, he's just feeling great. So he could maybe absorb a few blows here that maybe a year or so ago he wouldn't have been able to in a big match. <laughs> it's all fair enough. Yeah. Thirty-nine. So the frame was in the balance, but Gary Wilson has won it. Forty-five. And he's on the scoreboard in this quarter-final. Mark Allen's lead reduced to one. With one to play before the interval, it's two-one. So it's two-one. To Mark Allen, Gary Wilson getting on the Thank scoreboard you, the there in frame three. This is the last before the mid-session. Remember tonight, one of Snooker's great rivalries resumes. Ronnie O'Sullivan against Mark Selby. Yeah, it's been a, a while since I've looked forward to a match as much as that one tonight. Great rivalry. That this match here could turn into a classic. Shaking, he said he got close to it. it. Would have been on the black, I guess. Yeah, 
<laughs> for Mark Allen, the dynamic has changed playing Gary Wilson now. Obviously, he's aware that he's joined the winner's circle. He's earned his place in this event and, and then some. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Thirty. Mm, it's not worked out as well as he would have liked. Played a good shot, stunned into the pack. Got this red to the far left corner, but certainly not easy. You can see the bridge hand is a lot further away from the cue ball than he would like. To cut it into the middle. He's been awesome in the middle pockets, actually. I think today and his first match, Williams. Yeah, it just seems to me he's just found a bit of spark this week. Maybe he was slightly lacking. I mean, obviously, he's won two tournaments Thirty. this season. He did play well, certainly, in that final of the Champion of Champions. The shootout's a completely different sort of event, of course. Other times, he's looked a bit sluggish, but there's just a bit of energy about Mark Allen this week. 34. Yeah, I think the fact of this, the, the stature of this tournament, as we've said, it's the best 16 41. players of the season. More often than not, you're on the match table. And it just, for the best players in the world, it just gets their juices flowing. 42. Perhaps more than some of the other events. But you just know you've got to play well or you're going home.
47. Just landed a little bit short. And this is a red at the back of the bunch that goes. Looking at a plant. He had lots of cement and cement his place in the Tour Championship. We're talking about the World Championship in Crucible, but to be in that Tour Championship, playing those long frame matches, a huge event. He'd love to be there. But if he carries on like this, it won't be a problem. What a chance for 3-1. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, it's always a great event, but it's been played this year in the centre of Manchester. First week of April, so going to be terrific atmosphere, I'm sure. Season is long. You can't expect every week 55. to be in top form. Sometimes you get peaks and troughs. It's a good time of the season to be in a peak with the World Championship two months away and some big prizes, 56. real big prizes to play for before that. As I said earlier, this is the most important thing in an armory for a top snooker player 63. is to be score heavy, win frames in one visit relentlessly. And that's what Mark Allen is doing at the moment. 64. Being able to win the scrappy frames is important, of course, but this, for me, is what it's all about at the top level of snooker. Yeah, it's a terrific ready potty, wasn't it, into the middle to get this 69. going. And now Wilson already needing a snooker. This red, you feel, will make sure. Seventy. So Wilson has had chances, but 3-1 feels about right. Alan played very well indeed overall. Oh, that'll annoy him. <laughs> no sentry. Like Alan. And, uh, well, Gary Wilson's not given this up yet. 75, the difference, 59 on. He's going to give it a go, but he's looking for all the world like 3-1. No. <laughs> Some shot to stay on the black. I guess he's feeling well, the red below the pink. Could be a chance for a snooker. Obviously, with the red still on the table, the free ball could come into play. 16. You just never know. Of course, he got... You might wonder, why is he playing on? Well, he got three in the decider of the semi-final. The Scottish Open against Show You Long, five each. He needed three on the colours. He got them and won not only that match, but he won the tournament. Quite get on the red as he would have liked to lay in behind the pink and get the red away from it. Even so, it's a snooker. Away from 24. Ideally, he wanted that red near a colour somewhere, then the free ball could have come into it. But 
Mark four. Allen hasn't hit the red, so there's one of them. Gary Wilson, four. And this is a bit more dangerous now because a snooker with a free ball. And uh, he'd actually be able to tie. Needs to keep the red on the table, really. <laughs> Alan would love to see the red in, even if Wilson pots it. Yeah, so it just takes away the danger of the, the free ball on the red and potential extra eight points that would come with it. So it's a, a tougher task now. Eight. Gary Wilson, eight. Yeah, it was a chance to get him behind the brown. Didn't get there. Seems like a big target where the yellow is. <laughs> Wilson's problem, really, Mark Allen, he's unlikely to do anything sort of daft. He's not going to start bashing the balls around or anything like that. So if he is to win the frame, they've got to be really good snookers.
Yeah, the thing at this level, we need in three snookers, is you probably have to lay about, I don't know, 15 snookers <laughs> to get those three foul shots. I mean, he's always actually played on for them, Gary Wilson, but I just think the fact he, he won that big match, having got them, is obviously in his mind here. And this is one. He's looking at coming up and down here. I guess the further White's got to travel, the more chances of something going wrong. Like that. Oh. So that's two. Gary Wilson, four. <laughs> well, if he wins this, he'll be rivaling Houdini for escapology. But he's suddenly half sensing it now, isn't he? That there might be a chance here. Uh, yeah, conceded. caught the knuckle in the middle pocket, left the yellow on, he gave it a go, he always looks unlikely. At the very least, he made Mark Allen earn the frame, but it is Mark Allen on top here at the interval. In the second quarter final of the Players' Championship, he leads Gary Wilson 3-1. Allen! Hang on, Gary. Thank you. Frame five, Gary Wilson to break. Gary Wilson, former world under-21 champion. Mark Allen, former world amateur champion. Now, though, ensconced at the highest level of the professional game, both of them. Today, though, in the first half, Allen was really good value for that 3-1 lead. He played a trio of excellent frames, one not so good. But from the evidence of what we've seen so far, Neil, I think it's going to be a, a really tough assignment for Wilson from here on in. Yes, I mean, it's best of 11. He's not out of the match, clearly, and he's just won a ranking event at the weekend. But today, as you rightly say, Mark Allen has looked like he was going to score when he was in every time. And uh, with that sort of ability to control the cue ball that he has, sometimes it's about just getting in and the rest of it with his game speaks for itself. And the worrying aspect for Wilson is that although Allen is inconsistent from tournament to tournament, you really see him inconsistent actually in a match. If he starts well, he normally finishes that way.
Well, I don't think the red has gone past the middle pocket. He was hoping it would. I think it will snick to the middle. Cue ball not really able to be controlled fully. It's always the problem, you just haven't really got a clue where the balls are going to end and you're probably not going to be on a colour because there's a lot of reds down there and only basically one available colour. But he's got a sort of a shot of the black. Not a nice one. I don't know if he could get the spider out and cut this in, but it's, uh, it doesn't look a lot of fun to be playing it. Spider. Spider. Yeah, too much to ask of trying to Gary pop Wilson that. Won. It's an interesting match up these two, wasn't it? When you think they've never really played in a very important match, mostly short form, mostly last 32 or 16, so that it's not really um, a match of this magnitude that's in their head to heads anywhere. Now, if he nestles in behind a colour here, Mark Allen is absolutely terrific at this shot. Getting the cue ball right in behind it. Mark Allen won. He seems to sort of screw it, doesn't he? You hit to the bottom of the ball, which uh, takes a bit of getting used to, because you hit it, and then it will slowly uh, decrease in speed in that cue ball, because the back spins on it, which is uh, not good. Far. And a miss. Mark Allen, six. I think it's going back, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if he is going to come back into this game, Gary Wilson, first of all, he's got to get out of this slight predicament he's in. And he's probably got to win this frame and show us some of the form of uh, recent... When, uh, up yeah. in North Wales, he lifted the trophy the weekend. Slate trophy, Welsh Open. It wasn't easy, but his middle pocket potting has been so good of late. That was unexpected. Pleasantly surprising for Wilson. So he wriggled out of the snook he was in, and now he's got himself a, an early opening in this frame, and he's going to have to make something like this count already. Seven. Eight.
15. He's on a winning streak of eight matches, seven in the Welsh Open. Of course, he's first one here. Sixteen. Wilson also loves his nine ball pool. 20. He's signed up to be on the World Nine Ball Tour this year. And I remember last November. We were in Hanoi, Vietnam, at the inaugural Hanoi Open, and he was so downcast about his technique and the way he was playing. Fantastic. Very pessimistic about the future. And yet, three months later, he's on top of the world. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're good at Q Sports, and clearly he is very good. 31. Why not start playing other aspects of it, like pool? Or... I mean, obviously, the, a lot of people play a bit of billiards, but there's not much money in that these days. Very skillful 30. games involving a Q, and if you're a good snooker player, you could probably turn your hand <laughs> to a good level. I'm not saying that you immediately become the best nine ball player in the world, because it's not as simple as that. But you. You've got a head start on some other people. Mm, I think you'll be more than happy with that, because he did not play that. 13 now. He hit the first red, caught a ball, it slid away to the right, and now he's on the one to middle. Don't believe it was quite as planned. But it has opened up reds to the right Fort. corner, but he's absolutely... Overhit that one. He'd be not happy Very well at all. Ford. Because he got lucky and he hadn't <laughs> taken advantage, but the Reds had been split beautifully. Look at the Reds. All gone to waste now. That was a gross misjudgment. Literally a head scratcher. I mean, Wilson had no choice but to play the snooker, but he knew full well that he was going to get nothing from it. It was the only shot he had. That's touching ball. So it's a handy lead, but that won't be of any consolation, given the way that last break ended. It's a good shot from Mark Allen, and he's forced him in playing the one red. He probably didn't want to move. He's put the other red into the bunch quite neatly. But even though he has clear access to the right-hand red, Gary Wilson refuses to bring it into open play. So it's a good little battle taking place here now after that... <laughs> ...that Wilson has gained.
turn the outside red over and this will go to that distant yellow pocket. Could lead to big things this. Very good, not an easy shot at all with the ball so close together. Now a chance to just nudge the five reds in centre table. Never going to hit it all that hard, but <laughs> very awkward queuing on the red Eight. to middle now. I think he's worried about if he hit it with more pace, the cue ball might have disappeared down to the bulk end. But I think both players recognise the importance of this frame. For that reason, they're not taking any undue risks. Mark Allen, eight. Intervals change matches on many occasions. Allen hoping that's not the case here. Needed cover, and the blue is providing it. Which means this safety shot has got to be very good, very accurate. Yeah, I think he tried to move that red. That was uh, fairly close to the left corner. See Gary Wilson, you, you know that he can be de devastating players. We saw against John Higgins in that semi final where he could have made back to back 1 4 7 starting the match. I mean, who's ever started a match like that? But he's got an all round game, you know, he's quite a seasoned player. He's not a youngster, been around the game a long time. It's only recently, you know, that he started to really do any winning. That's a fantastic yeah. part. It really is. It's hard to see an aspect of his game that's weak. He's always said his temperament probably isn't his strong suit, but that's better now. Pots long balls, he's, he can be fluent. He knows the tactical side. Just a good player, full stop. And the cannon did not work out, but a 34-point lead, the way the balls are, is healthy. Yeah, you're right about Gary Wilson's temperament. It is and has been a problem. But it's not a lack of bottle. He's certainly got plenty of that. It's more to do with the fact he gets very frustrated Gary Wilson, when eight. he dips below the standards he thinks he should produce all the time.
uh, if nothing else, Mark Allen has a chance to get this red in play now by playing safe from it up and down with the cue ball to the bulk end. Again, it's a good shot. I mean, he's blocked off the left side of the table altogether. And, uh, well, might be able to just swing the cue ball across to the left from the red on the right there. Could get behind the green from this VS it will. Not quite, but good effort. can get to the bottom red on the left on the cushion but uh, to hit it very thin I mean the cue ball coming across it you can get to the other red as well as you can see that's probably going to be the one again it's a very good battle this uh, safety duel we're seeing a lot of good shots from both players and quite Threatening safety shots, putting your opponent not just at the other end of the table, but in trouble. You can get to that red through the gap. a little smile he can't believe that the gap was even there and it's hard to know how significant that will be but <clears throat> I mean from where Gary's sitting he couldn't have imagined a pot Eight. was available the Reds looked all in front of each other Three good pots in this break so far, but he will need a lot more than that. That's a big gamble trying to develop that red from coming square onto it. It's a double. 15. Mark Allen, 15. Allen back in the frame. In the tactical ascendancy as well. smattering of applause but he has left the red to the left middle and he, he was straight away knew he'd perhaps hit the wrong red there and getting out of that snooker it's very good at those shots he's very close to he had put in one if you remember early in the frame up into the yellow pocket those shots the cue ball object all close together with his 
short action, it doesn't seem to inconvenience him at all. The obvious stumbling block, the red, frozen to that right-hand side cushion. The rest of the balls sitting pretty. Yeah, I think you're right, and for that reason, he just wanted Eight. to put this red into the middle of the table in open play and get the cue ball back in behind the black. Could be a frame-winning shot if he was to get it right. Mark it's Allen, not bad, eight. but he would like that cue ball buried behind the black if possible. That's what he's slightly disappointed by. Half a chance, this red. It's basically on the yellow spot, very close to it. The other red that was Allen's problem has now been transferred over to being Wilson's problem. And he tried to solve the problem immediately at the cost of potting the red. just roll up to the red off the cushion that's by the yellow, which seems a pretty inoffensive shot. It's not going to cause him too much grief. It doesn't win you much, but it doesn't lose you the frame either. Couldn't wait to see the trouble he got Wilson in. Frame time approaching 27 minutes, the lengthiest of the match so far. There's a really good shot that Mark Allen played him. He's trying to basically get behind a ball that's there's no room behind it. Yeah, he's just got to the side of it. So that was very good control. I mean, it's not that it's a difficult snooker to hit, but yeah. A very good chance he'll leave something if he's not careful here. Oh, well, he has missed it. Oh. Foul. Oh. A miss. <laughs> Mark Allen. Should never have missed it. Maybe he was just when you play it at an extra pace like that, then uh, you know the cue ball throws yeah. off at differently Please to what man. you expect. <laughs> and now Yamba has got a slight problem of getting these balls replaced. And the yellow was, as I say, it did very well to get behind it because uh, it was fairly close to the cushion. It wasn't on the cushion like that, surely. Ben Williams, the marker, directing traffic. I think you can never accuse Jan Verhaas of his getting into a fluster. He looks so laid back. 
An experienced referee, of course. Seen it all. Yeah. Are you good? Could have been worse. Yes, he's left a choice of reds, but neither a gimme by a lung chalk. These are the shots that glue a match win together, if you take them on. Yes, it's been a strange old frame, hasn't it? This one with uh, Gary Wilson early on making a break of 40, but it's been a, a real struggle just to get the advantage for both players. Wilson had a fairly good lead, which is now down to just a handful of points, seven points. And I don't know if this will cut back. It looks, this one looks thin. He, he missed, uh, he put one earlier that was thin. I don't think it's on to pot it. Using the bump of the pocket to his favour. Now, does Mark Allen have a go at this red? He could cost him the frame, or should he get it? Maybe win him the frame? Extend his lead in the match? Seems unwilling to take that risk. I like the mix this week from Mark Allen. He's been circumspect, but also, when needs be, fluent. You can't rely on one aspect of the game now. You have to have everything. It's a pretty good white ball again. He's got the uh, snooker, I think. Yep. And the problem is, both reds are away from the cushion. It's not a question of rolling up to a red very easily. And this could go wrong, this shot, trying to make contact with the red. Far. And miss. missed it very narrowly. Mark Allen. So it goes back. I wonder. <coughs> just make the slight adjustment. What he doesn't want to do is hit the red full ball and leave it to middle, or anything like that, to right middle. Yeah, Mark.
hard, uncompromising match play this. Not happy, weak in both senses. One. Yeah, and he's finished uh, basically nowhere. No angle on the yellow whatsoever to get down for red. It's a kind of length on the shot that where you don't pop the ball you're pl pleased to finish there not so pleased when the red goes in but Mark has got Wilson the won. same problem that Gary Wilson had if he's running up to this red he doesn't want to slip past it or just push it towards the middle pocket it's that annoying distance away from the cushion which does not suit the player getting out of the snooker Taking a different approach, ending it with pace. It's quite a good shot, he hit a lot of the red. Just coming up to 35 minutes of play. Officially the lengthiest frame of the tournament. Both have invested a lot into this. Well, I mean, Gary Wilson did not mean to get the yellow out and that previous shot hit the yellow directly from a safe position. But if this red goes in, that's worked completely in his favour. That was a good chance. Get the feeling if you miss those, it's probably going to be hitting too much of the red. And that's what he did. Kellen leapt up as soon as he hit that, but he didn't know at the point of contact that he would get the pink in the way. Gary Wilson not amused when he walked around the table to see that. It would be annoying for Mark Allen if he were to lose this frame. It would be devastating for Wilson to fall 4-1 behind. time surely Gary Wilson cannot afford to squander this chance because uh, he's been pegged back in the frame and this is what turned up A sensible thing just to get it onto its spot it's going to take one more shot yellow to green Got to be played with a little bit of precision. The cue ball's running across the sort of the face of the Four. green ball, and you can misjudge the speed on these if you're not careful. That's absolutely Six. fine. And uh, there's not much more to do now. Green, brown, and blue. These long frames. Nine. 
you know, 38 minutes in length. They're okay if you win them, but they're pretty soul-destroying if you lose them. Thirteen. Eighteen. Walton struck with it. Twenty-four. Patience rewarded. Five. Five. The reason the crown Welsh Open champion back in the match. Mark seven. Allen's lead trimmed to three-two. Frame five was a battle royal. Frame six. Mark Allen to bit. Mark Allen will want to re-establish the fluency he displayed before the interval. Made breaks of 84, 63 and 75 to take a 3-1 lead. But of course, then came the interval and a very lengthy frame five of 39 minutes. So maybe the rhythm of both players has been disrupted. Yeah, too thin. The, uh, he didn't want to hit the pack too much of those just to get the reds out, but of course hitting it too thin means you just hit something on the way back. So it's a mistake or two creeping into the safety. Mark Allen's game. One. That's not a good shot Had to avoid that. It's not the worst nudge on the brown to uh, make up for it though. Gary Wilson what? Just when you started to suspect the pendulum had swung, a really good chance squandered. What's happened to Mark Allen's game just a little bit here? I mean, that was not good. Positionally, nowhere. And uh, the pressure's starting to just get to both players in different ways, seems to me. Very big game. Chance to be in a semi final of a, a ranking tournament that's uh, has grown a lot in stature over the last few years. Big prize fund. There's a lot of implications about cut-offs and events to be in, seeding positions. But for now, both players have just lost their way of touch. For Wilson, even though he's a three-time ranking event winner, being in a semi-final is still a big deal. If he got through today, it would be only his 10th overall. Mark Allen much more accustomed to being in the last four of a ranking tournament. If he were to prevail today, it would be his 37th semi-final.
Uh, re wreck possibilities here. Well, Gary Wilson asked Mark if he wanted one. Mark didn't exactly say yes, but. Yeah. I think they're going to just get on with the next frame and do the same frame, do it all again, wrap them up. He was just messing with Gary Wilson. He always knew that it was going to be a re-rack there. Just made him lean over the table and play one extra shot. Yeah, and strangely, that, that little short frame that never was there, it was littered with errors from both players. Safety, a few pots and position, you name it, was not right. So it gets struck from the records and we can start again. I'm sure frame six will resume in a better place than... That re rack ended. It's a very big game of snooker, but both players look sharp at the beginning. But there's, there's a little bit of tension that appears to have crept into proceedings. You were mentioning the implications going down the line. Gary Wilson could still, with a deep run here, get into the Riyadh Season World Masters in Saudi Arabia. As for Mark Allen, well, he's 12th provisionally on the one year list. Win today, he's up to 10th, and he would widen the gap on Hossein Vafai in 13th. Six. Mark Allen to be. And his trip to Manchester wouldn't be mathematically booked, but he'd be almost there. And when it comes to the Tour Championship, you want Allen's ilk involved, i.e. the very best. It's very hard to try and force the cue ball round because you don't know much about where the red's going to end up. Previous to this, they've only played Exclusively, best off seven frame matches, but all of them have been close. Five meetings prior to today, three have gone to the wire. The other two resulted in 4 2 score lines. Get the feeling right now, this one could also. Go all the way. Me. That is uh, Mark Allen five. In the ball on the way through to the Reds. Oh. Trying to get as much of the red, I think. Perhaps we even pot the red, I, I suspect. But I think it's a heart stopping moment that the Gable careering into the bunch. Big mantra whatever you do, don't hit the blue. It wasn't meant for that kind of circumstance, but it certainly fits. One. Once again, leapt up in the air as if he wasn't on this, but Six. now he comes round. Has he got through to pot it? I don't think he has. 
Not unless he puts a bit of side on left-hand side to straighten the angle. Might be able to pot it then. Gary Wilson would have been Seven. quite hopeful there because Mark Allen had given every indication that he wasn't on the red. Okay. It was a better shot than it looked there, just landing it flush in behind the pink. A couple of inviting reds to the left corner just above the black that you can play on here. Might open things up in this frame a lot. Because since the mid session interval, it's been a sort of slightly stop start, more stop than start. 17. There's a chance to put that right. Eighteen. Yes, the rest pot from Allen was also good in the respect that he'd missed three of his previous six attempts today using the rest. <coughs> Needed to re-establish... Twenty-five. I'm not going to say he's dominance, but he's... Lead role in this match. 26. <sighs> Thirty three. Thirty-four. Yeah, not many options here. Reds go to the right middle. Sort of cue ball somewhere around the pink spot. Thirty-nine. Forty six. Forty seven. Forty 
Yeah, there's not much else you could do, red to right middle. I've seen one or two in the middle pockets stay out that could have easily dropped. 54. Sort of directed at the middle to far jaw. But he's screwing them. This red in slightly wider pocket opening from there and the ball next to it. That was never going to go in on any table. Mark Allen, 54. I think that the pockets, middle pockets are quite... Yeah, quite tough, I think. And, of course, that will be reflected in the next shot of Gary Wilson's into the same pocket now. And this one's a big one if he can get back into the frame by knocking this in. Well, that was never going to be anything but straight in. So, here's a chance for Gary Wilson, who's been fairly quiet despite taking that last long frame. Clearly, there are one or two issues along the way. The right hand red, the red down the table, I don't think will be a huge problem. And he's going to cannon the two reds below this one he's going to pot here, which were tied up. So, nothing that he can't deal with in this possible frame snatching chance. Eight. I think he'll fancy his chances. Highest break so far today, 45. Could easily be eclipsed here. And of course, he's right handed, so the red down the right hand side cushion. 14. Better for him than it is for Alan. <laughs> 50. Yes, it kind of feels like it's all building up to that red. Yes, he's right-handed, as Phil said, and there's a good chance 22. of potting it. But if you got right behind it, I'd fancy him. But anything else, there's still got to be a test taking that on. These pockets are pretty standardised this week, and they're always meant to be standardised. They're playing not as generous as some I've seen. Which means down the cushion you can't take anything lightly. Twenty-nine. Now here's the chance to play behind the red. We'll not get a better one. He's played it very well. I mean, whatever happens from here, he couldn't have played that shot any better. Thirty-six. Would have loved another minuscule piece of travel on the cue ball. And taking Neil's advice, doing nothing outlandish. No, but this next shot, the pot and the getting on the red, not straightforward. Be more than happy. Played it well. Of course, the other day you nudge the blue and snook yourself, but he's not in that kind of way of thinking right now. Fresh from the Welsh Open, 45. The weekend you can hardly say that he lacks confidence. And this would be a significant steal if he could make these. 
Will 49. do. 51. Fifty four. Fifty eight. What were we saying? Intervals change matches. It's been a very well played 63. break, though. Yes, they were there. There were one or two awkward shots. But he's got them all very nicely. We've really got a match on the hands now. 69. Haven't we just? <laughs> 76 on the frame. The clearance of 76. That was terrific stuff from Gary Wilson. Good enough to be on level terms. Welcome back to the Players' Championship in Telford. The quarterfinals, and I'll tell you what, Mark Allen must be reeling a little. 3-1 up at the interval, everything going pretty much according to plan. Breaks of 84, 63 and 75. But then he lost a 39-minute marathon to that man, Gary Wilson. But the loss of the sixth, I think, was even harder to bear for Allen. He was 59 nil ahead. He overcut a red to middle, caught that near jaw. And Wilson, with a plum, cleared with 76. It wasn't the highest break of the match, but I think Neil Folds, it's fair to say, it was far. Yeah, he took them well. You know, Mark's missed to middle that you mentioned. He didn't get that close to it. It was very much near jaw, never going to drop. And then, of course, Wilson shot to the same pocket was more accurately Thank played. Thank you, frame seven. Gary Wilson to break. Now for Wilson, it's a case of consolidating on momentum. Alan, though, well equipped at shrugging off setbacks. Blue ball. Yeah, he's finished right in between all the bolt colours and the blue. It's the less of any uh, four evils, really. This shot, not much fun. Got to avoid hitting that red on the left on the way back. Which seemed unavoidable. Six. Some of his flow uh, seems to have Vanished a bit. He played superbly the other night, and he started well here. But the, uh, the flow that he had with his game, he's just gone for a moment, and he's become a bit more of a grind for him, as often is the case. He looks dangerous when he's in amongst them, Mark but at Alan's. the moment he's just striving to get in. 
And I think that last frame, losing it in the way he did with that Wilson 76 clearance, hurt him a little bit. Wilson looks so assured in many respects out there now, much more than he's ever been. That's what winning does for you. That's what capturing titles does for you. He feels part of the big time, not some kind of intruder trying to make his mark. The mark has already been made. He's a top player. And I think for the first time he knows it. An attempt to get the cue ball right back down the table. Of course, you have to get close to the pot so that cue ball reacts in the way you anticipate it will. Well, number 12, Gary Wilson, that's a personal best. And bear in mind, he turned pro 20 years ago. If he wins today, he'd go to 11th provisionally, setting a new mark again, leapfrogging Kyron Wilson. when you hit something on the way through, but he mightn't have been very far away from the potting angle. Has the brown got in the way of the red up there? I think it has. 
I don't know if you can pop one to the right corner though. Possibly. Yeah, might be able to get to enough of that red. Providing the pink isn't in the way, but after the shot that uh, Mark Allen missed, I think Gary Wilson might have come to the table hoping for an easier opening red than the what he's faced with. Options not exactly a plenty here. Just playing safe. Played a good safety shot. I mean, obviously, with that red up the table, means that uh, Mark Allen probably will roll up to the bottom left hand red from the side cushion. Well, he thought about it, now he's found something else. Pretty good safety shot though, isn't it, what he's played? I have to say, that's a good effort from there. He looked in a bit of trouble. Speculated a little. Cue ball though, deep in bulk. The red just got nudged over a pocket. How costly will that be on such fine margins? Yes, no angle on the blue. It seems like nothing quite is going to plan positionally. 
especially for Mark Allen, who's usually very precise, but of course, finishing straight on the blue from that shot is could happen to anybody. And it's just now a question of the brown up and down for the red. Try and make something happen. The black buried. Not an easy scoring table by any means. Good shot, though. It's as good as it gets, positionally. Five. Yeah, absolutely A1 now. Six. It's all very intense. Lots of effort into every single shot. Nothing straightforward. Thirteen. <laughs> the pink will not pot, so this is the quintessential examination of queuing. He wasn't doing a great deal with the cue ball. He didn't want the cue ball to travel too far down and left anyway, 18. or else he wouldn't have been on this red. Nineteen. Still feel that he'd do or to make many more out of this chance unless he takes a risk and gets all the reds open. It's kind of what he's tried here. Not gone into them with any great pace. Yeah, well, it's just a difficult table. He 24. may not be on anything here. There could be a red that goes through the gap. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Twenty five. <laughs> Maybe another little nudge on the reds would help. Those two reds on the left close together facing the wrong way from the left corner. I wonder if he's going to try and go into them. He's certainly trying to have a look at that. I think that's he'll settle for that. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. 
it's a very hard graft, this break. I mean, he's made 32. It's been... Uh, the reds have never been opened at any stage. Thirty-six. Given the location of the remaining balls, this is a very healthy lead. But he's not satisfied. He wants more. Thirty-seven. I mean, he already knows the top red goes in the middle, the one directly above the black, because he was gave it some thought last time. But even then... 43. Quite a difficult pot, so he's looking at something else. Forty-four. If he's straight enough on this pink, he will certainly be able to play on it this time. This break has been... Difficult, but he's still going, and sometimes he's, you just stay at the table, occupy the table, pop balls from angles. Yes, it doesn't ever look like it's going to be a, a frame-winning chance, but he's inching closer to that happening. It's not going to be in a single visit, though. Mark Allen. 49. We're here in Telford. Nearby Ironbridge is a World Heritage site. Deemed so by UNESCO. It's called the birthplace of industry, and that was a very industrious break. Lots of hard work in that one. Just a method of containing, and of course, the previous frame he was a long way behind and 59 nil down, and he won it. So, why couldn't he do the same in this frame? 55 down. This would be even more of a remarkable steal, given the okay. position of the balls. But, of course, we've seen it time and time again, how a table in a few shots can open up. he necessarily had to take on at this stage with his lead in the frame. Uh, if you miss it, Red can go along the cushion, open everything up, but 
it went in, so none of that matters. Oh, he's almost there now. This frame has not been all that pretty, Seven. but the break he made was very hard working, as Phil was explaining. 49, and now these. Eight. Never been behind in the match. And they just nose in front again. The typical stubbornness 14. of Mark Allen. Twin knockbacks in frames five and six, but refusing to yield. Yeah, so Gary Wilson invariably carries on, as we were saying earlier, heard the commentary before the mid-session with the... Uh, Dave Hendon and Stephen Hendry were saying about the fact that he does carry on, and usually, and occasionally it works in his favour, as it did, of course, in that Scottish Open, when he wanted three snookers, I think. He won a frame like that, so he's no reason why he wouldn't try, but it looks for all the world like this frame goes to Mark Allen. Yes, he's 69 adrift. Four reds and therefore 59 on the table. So three snookers needed or one snooker and a free ball. Played that well. If he could take these three reds and blacks and leave that red up the table or the yellow, I mean, obviously, he looks an easy snooker from down that end. You don't know it unless you give it a, a shot. Eight. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Looked at the scoreboard, worked it out, could afford to take a pink, so why not? So this is it. I think it's obviously behind the yellow 20. goes without saying, but where that red ends up is the significant factor here. If you can get it right round the table in behind the black, it could be a fiendish snooker to be in. It's done all right. Gary Wilson, 20. Talking about hit, hitting the black or leaving a, a free ball, all sorts of things could happen, but of course just hit the red and none of that applies. For a second, he felt he had another easy snooker, but he just crept in behind the pink.
Gary Wilson is no shrinking violet. He always lets you know what he's feeling out there. Especially if he feels aggrieved. He won't be after this. Really good effort. But of course, a few moments ago, he was placed in that fluke snooker. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, but he's trying to push it in or over the pocket. It's inviting Gary Wilson to pot the red. Then, of course, the free ball scenario is gone. Well, it's, it's less effective anyway without a red on. The yellow not in the way. <laughs> He's played a really good frame here, nothing spectacular. From Mark Allen, but the compilation of that 49 break Six. it was very cleverly crafted. Eight. <coughs> that laid the foundations, and now he's going back in front again. Eleven. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-six. The arm free to play an exhibition shot, and what a, a shot it was. And now he's back in front at 4-3. On the occasion of his 38th birthday, Mark Allen is now two frames away from celebrating with a semi-final place in the Players' Championship. But given the... He will not be taking anything okay. for granted. Mark Allen to break. Since the interval, we've had one frame of 39 minutes. The most recent lasted 31 minutes. It's hard fought. Yeah, well, that's a big mistake at the start of a frame. And uh, chances have been fairly Quite thin on the things. ground. Thank and you. all of a sudden, having lost that frame to go behind again, he's given Mark Allen a terrific opener here. Thank you. Eight. 
8. Now, there's a little gap between the two reds above the black. If you're going to consider getting the cue ball in there. Now, he's just going to run through, I think, just to avoid it. Tried to miss the red. It'd be slightly annoyed that he just didn't slip past it. Changed the angle completely. 16. On the red. And now, well, he's faced with the uh, shot just brushing off the bunch, whether he likes it or not. Might have somehow worked in his favour just to end up with that angle. Just pushed one further red out. Little noise, I think, from the front row at an inopportune moment. Twenty-four. Looking for a third title this season, Alan. After the shootout, our own champion of champions. Twenty five. Q wipes, he flew back. Thirty two. Anything he overscrewed a bit for the red to the right corner, which he played, but of course he has the other one. With the rest a little bit more difficult. Yeah. I still thought he'd get it, I have to say. Mark Allen. Yeah, I mean, if he plays on the right hand red as a left hander across the table, he was never going to miss that one. Just. He uses the rest of the right-handed player. Of course, if he was right-handed, he wouldn't need the rest on that shot. So it looks awkward leaning across on those. And that's the fourth pot he's missed with the rest today. These days, Mark Allen, all business. <clears throat> Circumspect. Hard.
Yeah, I mean, he put the cue ball tight on the cushion and he's not left an easy way back there for Mark Allen. So it's probably a containing shot cue ball at this end of the table. That's what he tried, or he tried to pot it as well. If he'd have played just a sheer containing shot, the double kiss would not have been on. So, there's half a chance. One. Five. Resolute at the interval when he was 3-1 down. Needs to be again here. Six. Slight hesitation, I think, on that shot as he was about to hit it. It didn't look a very rhythmical stroke. He's not on the black perfectly. I mean, it's a problem. Got to do damage here. But I hope this split goes well. It's a split I don't think he particularly wanted to play. No, it's OK. Reds are looking in better shape. 13. The next red, he's not perfectly behind. Fourteen. Good shot because he wanted to roll it in to finish that angle on the yellow. I mean, if he wanted to go into the five reds, it's quite a wide target, although the reds are fairly well spread already, but it would be one way of stopping the cue ball from going somewhere he didn't want. Precise play, though, on the loose red, although it's now a stretch. So Six. Got promised this opportunity. This is probably a very similar rest shot to the one that Mark Allen missed at the opposite corner of this frame. He's been more reliable with the rest today, though. Until that point, it was five out of five, and then came the blunder. 16. I just wonder if he'll regret not going into those reds off the yellow instead of leaving that rest shot, which wasn't easy. Quite a big target he had from the yellow into the bunch.
As Mark Allen makes up his mind what to do here. Don't forget tonight he is going to be a clash of titans. Mark Selby against Ronnie O'Sullivan, one of Snooker's genuine rivalries. Has to be happy with that, Neil. Has to be. Yeah, it's uh, potentially troublesome. Got clear side a couple of reds here, but he always wants to rest on something. So off the cushion into the three reds down the table here. One. Impasse broken, and what a lovely little kiss on the yellow after the bump off the middle pocket. Indeed, all of those things. He got lucky there. Cuba was really heading down into bolt without any chance of an easy ball. And like you say, hit the bump and then the nudge. Is the reason this chance is now he's coming his way. He's not that far behind Three. either, so he, you know, there's an argument he can carve out a little lead from this, even if he doesn't go on to win the frame. Four. And having missed a ball into this pocket in this frame already, using the rest. He now faces another test. This time with the extensions on. <coughs> and maybe that was the hangover from well, the first mistake. I didn't think he would miss that one, I've got to be honest. When you mentioned it, I thought, well, he's not going to... Come on, stuck here. Looks baffled by it. One.
Seven. Well, of course, the three reds are close together. Mark Allen will also need some of... Can't win it on the other two reds and colours. That's not in either. So all of a sudden, both players are missing a Mark couple Allen. of shots now. Seven. This frame especially. Just got a little lucky not to have left the red. And these, in some ways, become even more important, these frames, that you end up winning them when they're like this. Both players would readily agree it's not been the best from either of them today. But when you get to this stage in such a big tournament, it's not about performance or style points, just getting the result. That's the only priority. One. A little nod of the head because I think he's quite straight on this. It leaves him no options, angles to uh, get on a red or anything. Just dead straight down that line. Nothing much more he can do. I think the top red of the three will pot to the left corner, but you know, <laughs> the cue ball would have to be going towards the right corner to be behind it because there's absolutely no margin for error on this shot. Dead straight. Eight. Might feel it's too risk. Too risky to play this shot. What can you do with it? You're going into the other red. It's got a 27 point lead. It's a question a bit longer in this frame. It's very patient these days. I mean, you obviously would be Mark disappointed Allen, that the frame's not over, but all you can do is you'll make your last shot you know, a, a good one, one that you've put a lot of care into. Last season was Mark Allen's most successful. He won the Northern Ireland Open on home soil. He won the World Grand Prix and also the UK Championship. Those successes largely built on the word that Neil just used, patience, measured snooker.
Thank you. Trouble for Mark Allen this afternoon. His opponent is also very focused in terms of the fight. And his safety has been pretty good. Foul. And a miss. Gary Wilson. And no mistaken then. One. Sure. Take a look at the blue here leaning across. If you could screw down the table for the left hand red perfectly. Then yeah, this is an opening. Definitely an opening here if this shot goes right. Doesn't seem happy at all with it. Been a quite a long afternoon already. This is where you really need to dig into your reserves and not lose faith or concentration. Hmm. Well, well, well. Gary Wilson won. I'm a little surprised he didn't take the blue on there. I mean, maybe it wasn't as... It wasn't straight enough. I'm not sure. Attack is the natural tendency for Wilson. Adopting a game plan and maybe it's worked. Well, yeah, it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? Because he is on this red now. That was down to an error by Mark Allen more than anything else that he did. Put him in a little bit of trouble. One. Anyway, the chances come along. Obviously, he needs to be high on the black. Anything but top, or at worst, straight on the black. Eight. And he'll be, he'll be able to get on the red that's just below the cue ball now, the last red, as it'll be. Nine. That's perfect. Now, not straight on the, the red either. So just so he can run it along the cushion, and what a chance it'll be. So uh, this is the shot of the frame, possibly of the match so far. 16. And yet another frame that comes down to the last red. Oh, he I thinks it tapered out, I'm 16. not so sure. Never in. Never in for me. We're right behind it. Mark Allen in to re-establish a two-frame cushion. Three. Eight. It was a big moment, wasn't mm. it? I always thought it was away from the cushion. Um, seeing it, it might have just drifted at the last second, but I don't think it was ever on its way in, as I said.
massive shot though it felt in the context of what we're seeing. 12. Allen's afforded himself the luxury of breathing space. It was all about the last red. It's a game of fractions, and they were against Gary Wilson there. Mark Allen needs one more. The wind is blowing in the direction of Mark Allen again. But this afternoon, given the exchanges, yeah. given the twists and turns... Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, frame nine. From Gary Wilson to break. He's not home and dry yet. The one thing Gary Wilson must do is not dwell on missing the last red, whether it was his fault or not. Easy for me to say not so easy for him to do. Just has to try and forget it, ignore it. Well, it was a big moment, wasn't it? You know, he felt that he would clear from there with uh, the kind of confident mood he's been in. He thinks it rolled off. Not sure it was ever quite perfectly directed, quite honestly, but it made the difference in the frame. Would have been level at four each, I think, had it gone in. He's a terrific scorer, Gary Wilson. We saw that against John Higgins the other day when he nearly made... Well, he could have had maximums in the first two frames of that uh, match in the Welsh Open. But he has got his scoring boots on today. Just one half century. The first time these two ever played, it was in a small event in Gloucester, 11 years ago. Wilson trailed 3-1, fought back to 3-3, but Mark Allen clinched brilliantly with a 116 break in the decider. He would love to cross the line in similar vein here. Yeah, looking for the finest edge. Well, miss. 
the Gary keyboard Wilson. bounces out in the middle of the table. It leaves the, the other player with a slight predicament, you know, taking on something. Because in the end, you feel that Mark Allen is... You know, the skill he's got, he's going to hit the red thin and he might not get a better, better chance than this one. Just the edge is not there today. You know, he's in the most recent man to lift a trophy in, in the world snooker. Gary Wilson, last Sunday, Welsh Open, but yeah, the edge is not there in his game this afternoon. So far, still a chance. It's quite a threatening safety shot. Comes down to whether he can just sneak to the left of the brown and make contact thin on a red. I think the last frame would frustrate anybody. Gary Wilson, of course, has to put it behind him while he's still in the tournament. He can't be backtracking. You know, should he lose, the journey back home would perhaps be the time to reflect on that red that didn't go in. Down the cushion in the last frame, not now. Nothing to gain by you know, thinking about it while the match is still going. Lots of potential pitfalls at this end of the table. But I think Alan is OK. He looked at the two reds in the middle of the table by the pink spot, just below to the right of it, whether that's a set to the left middle. Yeah. I think it's hitting the far jaw, the natural angle. And the way this match has developed, the boat hasn't been pushed out very often. Maybe it will be now. He needs some inspiration. There it is. I think he made a good point, Phil. I think he has to now start to take the odd risk. He's been not dragged into tactical battle because sometimes you, know, you just have to play what's in front of you, but... Maybe a bit more adventurous with some of his shots. Take a risk or two, even in position. Could have gone into the reds earlier. A couple of things he could have done, which he hasn't done. But well, that's what happens sometimes. You chance your arm and you get nothing but bad luck. I mean, that's sheer bad luck. Gary Wilson, one. Mark Allen, four. Luck played such a big part in... The first quarter-final last night, and again, Lady Luck being cruel this time to Wilson.
Of course, if you're looking at it from a glass half full perspective, he didn't leave anything when he might well have done so. Another unattractive table, Neil. In that sort of an afternoon, you know, the series of safety shots has pushed the Reds into positions which are not very helpful to either player, actually. Alan seems very happy with the. Uh, just going along the way he is, even if it's not a classic game. I mean, he played superbly in his previous match. Today, not really as well. Even near as well as that. But, uh, you know, he's 5-3 up. He's looking to just chisel out any kind of a win. Yes, two totally contrasting matches. In the first round here, he made breaks of 146, 112, 102, 94, 70 and 68. Well, he may feel that that's uh, the least he deserves after the earlier on when he managed a, a three-ball plant went in there. And the Reds a long way apart. Six. At least after this, Wilson will have one of the high value colours on its spot.
It's more difficult red than the other one. But it offers better position. Good shot. 12. When he's playing well, he's very quick around the table and very quick playing the shots. If you get that fluency back to you know, this match, even from this position, it, you know, he can still win it because he's very capable of winning a frame in one sweep, you know, with a big break in not long. 70. In the afternoon, the balls have dictated, I think, to both players a little bit how this match will be played. But it isn't over yet. 18. Twenty-three. Well, I think the only ball that pots is the one that cuts right back. Unless he's going to play that plant. You know, the gap between the two reds is not an easy plant, this. Very good. Twenty-four. Very good shot, that. I mean, it... You see it from this angle, it looks unmissable, but from the overhead we saw, it didn't look anything of the kind. Another terrific shot through that gap between brown and yellow as played. 29. 30. Just enough sip off the side cushion to be on the correct side of the blue. The real size of a lead is often determined by the awkwardness or otherwise of the balls that are left. Well, this 36-point advantage for Wilson is substantial. Thirty-six. Uh, well, that'll annoy him, just to finish there. Yes, he's put himself in a... Decent position with that lead of 37, but clearly the break ends and it's now got to be one in another visit. And he got perfectly on the blue. He could have opened the reds up, could have got this frame one here and now. Gary Wilson, 36. Going two birds with one stone there. Opening up the table and getting a good length and direction on the cue ball.
Well, once again, good length on that safety shot. I mean, they're just putting him in trouble quite a lot with those all the red into play. Thank you. Double kiss is always on on that shot. If you don't get the, either the pot or for the red to wriggle in the jaws, it comes back towards the cue ball, it double kisses. One. Winning in one visit would be a stretch. Alan knows, though, he can get back into the meat of the frame. Six. Seven. Surely here he has to try and shift something. It's a natural, I think, to hit the two reds on the right. But of course, if he wants to play the get the red and the black out, well, even better. No, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. He, he went to play that shot and then changed his mind. Twelve. But he's got to go through that whole process again on his next colour. Thirteen. Surely now wishes that he had at least tried to shift reds. <coughs> well, he had the perfect angle on his colour. A frame that's followed the pattern of several others. Mark Allen, eighteen. I mean, he's got a lead of 19 points, Gary Wilson, but surely I mean, he might have to get that black into play off this safety shot. He might think about playing thin off the other ball. But... Not particularly safe. It really is a no-risk philosophy from Mark Allen.
biding his time. Trying to force Wilson that. into the attacking mindset. Wilson, though, so far in this frame, holding firm in terms of how he's approaching it. But you're right, though, he is doing that. He's trying to make sure that Wilson takes all the big risks. But no other player has punished each other that much in the break building and scoring. The balls have not helped where they've been going into places that, which are no good to either player. It's one of those afternoons. We're still not quite sure how it's going to pan out from here, though. Now, though, with the exception of that red on the, the side cushion, this table more open. This could be huge. The alignment to me seemed incorrect there, but has he fluted? Oh, dear me! The second fluke of the frame, and that was the most outrageous. He missed it by a mile originally. Yeah, this is a flute with bells on it, isn't it? Look at that. Two balls on the way through. Unlucky. It was a good effort, that, just to push it a ball's width further up, and then the red's there waiting for him. Eight. I don't know if that goes. It's a mightily acute angle. No, he's playing away from it. That doesn't pop. Not enough pocket there to aim for. So the fluke didn't actually Wilson, eight. win in the frame. If he'd got that cannon on the black just that little bit better, it might have done. Difficulty of shot and circumstance. Brilliant. Best shot of the match. A terrific shot on the red, wasn't it? I mean, the way the cue ball did not, as often happens on that shot, just Eight. drifts down past the line of the black. This is now giving him a great chance from nowhere. No. And if he gets in behind the yellow, then green and brown are easy. Blue, you know, not so difficult. Of course, he will need a bit more. Play with screw and left hand running side, reverse side. Actually, 16. Works out quite well. Straighter would have been better on this next ball. Eighteen. Can't hold this time. Keyboard's going all around the table to get from green to brown from that angle. And, of course, the blue and pink away from their own spots means there is a different kind of a problem as well. Getting on them perfectly. Using all the cushions. 21. Ooh, the jaw. The final jaw is taking it onto the cushion, otherwise... That cue ball was out in open play, and it kind of scuppered things a bit, because how does he get on the blue now? It's straight on the brown, tight on the cushion. Mike Allen. 21. Gasps, but that was not easy. So six points in it. Wilson needs brown and blue. Allen needs the pink in addition.
Another dogfight, our third game since the interval, which lasted in excess of half an hour. I don't think, again, that's helped anybody <laughs> all that much. I mean, it's one thing to say that uh, Mark Allen is going to need the blue and pink. But, of course, Gary Wilson, brown and blue, he needs blue on the cushion. No help to anybody. Almost maximum distance between white and brown. Quite a tussle, this. fighting so hard for supremacy on the brown, but really, the awkwardness of the blue dilutes the importance of the brown. Yeah, I agree. And uh, it's almost a question of, if you come pop the brown and get a, any kind of a cannon on the blue, that would be something. And we haven't got to put it along the cushion. And you can get to the thinnest contacts to pot this, but it's quite ambitious. I don't think you'll try it. Black's been pushed closer to the cushion as well now. Mark Allen could probably do a lot worse than push this brown onto the black, get the black into open play because that's a ball he's more likely to need than Gary Wilson. If you could push the brown onto it, leave the brown where the black is. No, oh, that was a... He tried Gary to be Wilson a bit clever there and play it a different way, but you saw what happened. He's been fortunate, I know that much. The brown has finished where it is, got ball in hand. 
now he all he's interested in there watching that ground was where it finished and somehow he's not left it on Wilson still needs brown and blue now though Allen ten adrift needs them all It's safe to say he wasn't very happy with that, <laughs> by the uh, reactions. But there's a lot to play for in the frame. I mean, it, to think that anyone could clear up brown, blue, pink, black from here, yes, it can be done, but it would take some doing. Well, I don't see him doing anything too ambitious here, getting on the pink. One thing getting the double, but as I say, the pink was never going to be in the equation. He's kind of slightly brought the frame forward and what could happen in it. They have been going 38 and a half minutes now. So saying it's brought the frame forward is stretching it a little bit, but even then, down to the last couple of balls. I don't know why he played the double if he doesn't know what to do now on the pink. They both need both. It's been a, a match of marathon frames, and this is the, the lengthiest of the lot. Mark Allen now. Okay. And I'll tell you what, it was worth the wait. It's a very good shot he played after all that. It's an advantage, Allen. It's good. I must avoid the double kiss here, playing the up and down. Yeah, he's gone the other way. place to finish. The only thing I will say here is that he has got the cue ball on the cushion. He's tried to go in the middle pocket, went all round the pocket, but that cue ball being tight is not simple to get on the black. <laughs> I'm surprised he played it at that speed, I've got to be honest. He it's the kind of speed that you play that shot where you're open to it, just drifting off line, hitting a finger mark, or didn't really threaten the pocket in the end. It's sort of a little bit of a weak shot for Mallon, that.
refusing to abandon the way he approaches this. No risks being taken, and he's played a very nice shot. I think that's the point, isn't it? He hasn't just put distance between the balls. He's put this ping onto the cushion. That's nicely done. Pressurised Gary Wilson now. Oh, goodness, because he's not looking great. This is a better chance than the, the last one over the left middle. Still got the problem of getting Quite the other piece. side of the black boat. Got to get underneath the cue ball here and round the back of the black. Six. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is not an easy shot actually from there. Six. You just knew. Nothing has been straightforward in the entire contest. And there's been another incredible twist. Seven and the frame. On we go. It looked as though Mark Allen was going to win. Now, though, Gary Wilson remains in there fighting. Trust the trader. Time. Trust the trader.com. Go fast. Go lightning fast. With Virgin Media's M125 Broadband. Just £27 a month with no setup fee. So why go fast when you can go lightning fast? Virgin Media. See what you can do. Visit virginmedia.com. Heard about Blossom and Grow Florist? The owners were like, I want our business to flourish and reach more customers. So they built a website with GoDaddy and Business Blue. Oh, hello. Hiya. I was just thinking about what you were telling me about. Pure cremation. Were you? I might give him a ring. I mean, I don't want anything fancy when I go. <laughs> And it's not just you lot I have to worry about, is it now? I just don't want my kids to have the stress or worry about the money. Yes, exactly. Getting it sorted and paid for has taken a weight off my mind. It costs less than I expected, and now they... Hey, Gran! ...will be able to remember me the way they want to. Oh. Find out why the UK's best-selling plan is the simple, fuss-free, pure cremation plan. Rated excellent on Trustpilot with over 13,000 reviews. Chat to our lovely people by calling now on 0800 160 1881 or visit purecremation.tv. Trust the Trader, sponsoring ITV4 Daytime. What an afternoon it's been. A good old-fashioned marathon, which is yet to be resolved. Frame nine took 43 minutes. It went down to the final black. We thought the decisive thrust was about to be applied, but Mark Allen left that knee-knocking black in the jaws of the pocket, and Wilson lives to fight into frame 10. Neil. These days, for a match to be three hours, 50, three hours, 43 minutes and counting is unusual at this level. Yeah, that's I'll right. But uh, that black he was left with was quite nasty, wasn't it? He's Thank got you. to regroup, do it all again, Mark Thank Allen. Thank you, 10th frame. Mark Allen to break. I think Gary Wilson, you know, the fact that he, he's got winning ways, he won a tournament last week. He, out of sorts and out of luck. There's no way he'd still be playing this match. It would be over, he'd be out. Now he's, because he's been doing well lately, and he finds himself in a position where he can still pinch the match. Very lucky, very fortunate. So maybe, 
he could take this one of two ways, say, well, I could have knocked that in, or he could be thinking, well, I missed it badly, but I've not left anything. This could end up my day. Maybe I'm meant to win this match. It's one way he could look at things. Yes, and if there's a demon sitting on Mark Allen's shoulder, it's whispering in his ear. You've just missed that black. Maybe it's not going to be your day. <laughs> Remember, it's his birthday. It could be bittersweet if he loses this one. So Alan's birthday, but the cake is going stale at this rate. Yeah, some trouble here. He's taking a minute looking at it because he can't see an obvious way up the table. So playing a containing shot instead, he, I think he didn't want to leave the cue ball tight on the cushion there because it might be that the left-hand red of the two below the black would then have been possible. But from there, not so. I will say one thing for once, the reds and the colours are in good spots if a chance came. Not always been the case in this match. Mark Allen has uh, shut up shop a little bit, hasn't he? He's not taking many risks. I think he had two chances with the pink over the pocket. Last frame. Middle pocket and... Close to the left corner. Still didn't get the frame one. On the positive side for Alan, he's got the mental fortitude to get over that loss of frame nine. Temperament sees great strength together with cue ball control. Many would crumble. Not him.
Uh, he's got a very, very uh, patient game these days, Mark Allen, just waiting and waiting, trying to regroup from the disappointment of what happened in the last frame when he had match ball and missed it. Could have gone in that last black, you know, on a different day. Acknowledgement from Wilson. That was a really good reply. Alan's safety has been terrific today. 86%. But of course, it's only a means to an end safety. Ultimately, you have to pop the balls. I mean, it's hard to regroup sometimes. You know, you get so close to getting the match one. As uh, Mark Allen has done. This is the... Uh, the black he missed. I mean, this on a different day could have gone in. Just hit the jaw, stayed over the pocket. He thought that for a second the match was over. Now he's got to go again. We've had... Well, we're well, coming up to eight minutes and not a ball has been put again in this frame. On the back of all those long frames we've had. This is a... Uh, Real battle. I'd like to think, you know, you say Mark Allen's winning the battle. I'm not sure he is, really. He's winning the match. But he, he seems to be at the point where things could still unravel for him. Because ultimately, as he knows better than anyone, and he showed us the other day, you can play all the safety in the world, but it's about what you do when you get your chances that's where you actually win the matches the safety and the tactical side of it gives you that strength to get opportunities but you've still got to take them and he didn't manage it in that last frame at the end numerous chances on the colors in fact This hasn't been a, a marathon because of the pace of play. 23 seconds average shot time for Wilson, 25 for Allen. Perfectly acceptable. It's because we've seen so much safety. That was the 213th safety shot of the afternoon. <laughs>
And when the exchanges are disjointed, rhythm is compromised. Knocking in that kind of ball if you're involved in a, a fluent affair, much easier than when it's all bitty and staccato. So the ice is broken and the cue ball stopping just in time for Wilson. Gary Wilson won. Muttering something under his breath, maybe he thought that, uh, in hindsight, that wasn't the right shot to play, I don't know. Something about that he was saying. One. Quality table time for both since the interval has been severely limited apart from frame six. And Allen made 54 and then Wilson cleared up with 76. Scoring has been well below par. Six. Seven. <laughs> oh, that cue ball has run on too far again. Twelve. Either that or not far enough <laughs> for the red below the pink. Could have played it to the middle or into the corner, but he finished right in between both shots and the red up the table, as you can see, that's not easy. So he, if he didn't put this red now, he'd be quite annoyed because it, when he came to the table, it was an absolute gift of a chance. Good recovery. Thirteen. By the fact that Brown was down there and close to the pocket, he could sort of swing that cue ball around and not come out of bolt. That's an interesting shot, the way he 17. played. So wide across the table twice, it's worked out nicely. Eighty. I think you're just looking at getting 40, 45 here. I don't think you can realistically think about a century or getting the frame one in a visit. Of course, he'd like to, but what started a good scoring table after a few safety shots after 11 minutes of safety the reds aren't that favorable or the colors so you take what you can possibly hang on to that was a nice little nudge 24 
Nothing, certainly since the interval has been plain sailing. Twenty-five. Players get to a, a stage where they are expecting a hiccup. They're looking for problems. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Pretty well played that time. But the angle is such that he has to go up for the red by the yellow ball. Thirty-eight. Four hours this match, that's just total playing time, doesn't include the interval or the... a few moments between each frame. Thirty-nine. But he's got a great ability, Mark Allen, which is rare. He can jettison mental baggage. 44. Forty-five. Now, as Neil said, having arrived in the mid-forties, development work has to start. Well, he wanted a half-ball flick on that uh, right-hand red of the two to widen the area between the uh, this red and the cue ball. I mean, see Jan Verhassi doing a very close look at this. And he's queuing away sufficiently so it won't be a push shot. But he's having a good look, though, is Jan. Legal shot. 52. Cue ball just stopping short of where he wanted it. Had he been playing that more full on with the ready, a push shot is very likely. But as I said earlier, he's very good up close to the ball, and there could be another one coming. This brown, very close to the brown, just doesn't. With the, you know, his sharp, short action, it doesn't seem to bother him being this close to the ball he's playing. I don't think I've seen a player better in this situation. Not a nice shot, that. Fifty-six. Oh, so he's almost there now. Somehow. Match has moved on all of a sudden quite quickly. After a long time. Fifty-seven. Like the black he failed on in the previous frame, this blue his match ball. <laughs> Sixty one in front. 59 on 62. the table, another red, and basically that's that. 63. 
I mean, if you say this is hard fought, it's an understatement, isn't it? I mean, it really has been find the blood this all day. Sorry. It started off very fluent for Mark Allen, that first frame, carrying on where he left off. Then it's turned into a grind. Got dramatic, Mark, giving Gary a few chances. Certainly at 5-4, you wondered if there was a Wilson come back in the offing, the way he stole that last frame. Well, that might just put play to any carrying on. Gary Wilson might have thought, well, after the Welsh Open win just off Sunday and a run here, it might just be time to have a few days off after a successful spell. Is his handshakes? No. Mark Allen, 69. He doesn't want to have a rest. He wants to try again. But surely Mark Allen wins now. Any hope for Wilson is forlorn. But he just can't put it to bed. One. Let's do some let's see. Sixty behind, forty three on. So he needs Eight. five snookers. No. Well Eddie Charlton used to carry on sixty, seventy behind on the yellow. Uh, on the colours in the uh, World Championships in the 70s, 80s. And he was just doing it because he thought he could still 16. win the frames. About 10, 12 snookers. And this is not quite in that league, and he's 16. got one anyhow, and it's a good shot. I think players used to just carry on. Concessions were more uncommon. Five snookers would be basically impossible, but of course there's always the chance when a red is on the table of going to get a free ball. That could yield an extra eight points, which is the equivalent of two snookers. But the red's off the table now. One. And that's why Gary Wilson has conceded. I'm sure everyone will agree it wasn't a classic. But for the birthday boy, the icing on the cake is a very hard fought 6-4 victory and a place in the semi-finals.